when we went to go and get on the plane to go there, like I nearly turned around at the gate because I was just like, I don't know if I can do this. It's been wild. It's gone from zero to 100. I think for all of us, our lives has just completely changed. Who do you believe is a traitor? And it's genuinely got more viewings than Love Island. Love, way I'm over. a celebrity. I'm a celebrity. Out. Surpassed. I'm a celebrity. 60 million views we've had. 60 million now. We made some good TV. <laughs> just friends. Oh, just hanging out. <laughs> cool. As friends. <laughs> how much was Maddie going in on you? We're in going there? straight in. So the actual traitors. How do you feel like knowing they kept that up in terms of like afterwards now? I got a funny story about this, right? You said quite an emotional speech around the the dinner table. Anything negative, I channel it and put it into positive outcomes. A no is an opportunity. One door closed is another open. If you don't have a plan for anything, then nothing can go wrong. That's the right attitude though, I like that. So in my head, it's like I either go the whole way and I'll know I'll become a multi-millionaire, or I just do nothing and go the other way and just go, I'm just gonna completely enjoy my life and that's it. Achieve greatness and be the best you aspire to be. Successful people always make the bed in the morning. No, Alyssa does. No, Alyssa hey, does. Hey. <laughs> to be fair though, she actually has for the last couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you taking him to the gentleman's club? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really know what was going on from the start. <laughs> do you now? No. <laughs> We are here with three of the traitors. We've not got any traitors here, actually, have we? You're all faithfuls, I've just realised. All faithfuls here. And we've also got a winner. So congratulations, Aaron. Let's give it up for Aaron, everybody. Thank you. Woo -woo. So the main question is, have you spent the money yet? Uh, no. So I actually um, took £3,000 for myself um, and gave £30,000 to my mum. So How has the last six months or so been for you? Um, a roller coaster. It's been wild. It's gone from zero to a hundred. I think for all of us, our lives has just completely changed. From going from nothing to something has been very overwhelming, and I don't know how to take it. I'm just like, ah! I just want to still stay true to myself, still uh, keep humble, and just remember where I've come from. Like, yeah, I think it's just it's very overwhelming, but I'm enjoying it. What I love about you is you're so driven, and you're kind of like, this is an opportunity. I'm not just gonna let this like pass me by. I've just seen you've done so many podcasts recently. You're out there, you've got your agent, you're trying to get work. What is, what's the best case scenario? What would you like to get out of this? I think my ultimate dream is just to make my family proud. That's the thing. Like, not worry about oh, money. Why is everyone so nice? Everyone's just got, <laughs> it's all just for the family and the love. This is what happens when you put genuine people on TV. Um, for me, it's just to never worry about debt or money, make, retire my mum, retire my sister, and just have, just live a, a good life. Um, and to do that is to be a TV presenter, get more diversity on TV. Also, I've got my cheer business, so I'd love to... Uh, show people what cheerleading is because still people think oh we wave pom poms around and it's not it brings so many opportunities to people's lives like I've been all over the country the world competing so yeah I think I've got I like to say I'm multi talented so I will literally give anything a go I'm driven I will always try my best and yeah just show people you can come from anything and be successful I love it now Matt you was involved in like one of the best storylines in the traitors. I, I, say it like, <laughs> I say it like it's Coronation Street. I, I'm sorry. I know it's your real life and stuff. <laughs> I'm chatting about it like, oh, <laughs> the love triangle. Let's talk about that. Like, obviously you oh, went we're in going there. straight in. <laughs> we ain't got much time. Jimmy's just been saying we ain't got enough time. Battery's going to go. We've got to do it. It was really like one of the biggest talked about parts of the show, right? Because you went in there single. Yeah. You met a pretty attractive Blonde girl named she Alex. She was good looking. You can't go she wrong. She still is. Or is it one of them? You can't see it now. <laughs> You're too pissed off. Too hurt. Nah, she, she's all right. She's all right. She's I get along bad. with Tom better than I get along with her these days. Do you days. actually? But yeah, yeah. Like me, Aaron and Tom actually get along really well, didn't we? Yeah, like we were out in London the other day and it was sick. Mm. And it was like, just like boys time. Like it was so good. Nice. And then like, it is nice to see her, but I don't see her that often. How was that genuinely? Obviously we saw you on the show, but... There's one thing being in front of the camera and thinking like, I've got to deal with this, process this, and I'm on camera. But then when the camera stopped, how did you actually feel? Because obviously for those who aren't aware, you obviously was flirting with a girl, she was flirting with you, and the whole time you were also friends with her boyfriend, you just didn't know it. Like the thing is with it, right, is like, I'm sure these two will agree with me, is when you're actually there, after about day one, you forget you're being filmed. Really? Like we had, like, we were there and there was camera crews like this, mm. and then you'll be having a conversation, 
and like you completely forget they're even there. Yeah. So it's like for us, it was so real and so raw. I think for the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And then like for me, it was just like kind of just being at this really cool castle mm. with this like cool girl who I thought was like well good, and I was just like oh my god, I'm gonna come out of this and it's gonna be sick. Like do you know what I mean? Mm. And then we woke up that morning, had that breakfast, and I was just like, ah, oh, well that dream's not happening anymore, is it? <laughs> But you even said like she's your potential future wife at one point as well. You were yeah. really in. Yeah. Oh, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Probably uh, not my finest hour of choosing my words, but. Or well, yeah. just choosing your girls, really. I think that was, <laughs> this is true. That was the biggest. Should have gone with Alyssa. Yeah. But, you know. How's things fine. with you and Alyssa? Yeah, they're good. Yeah? Yeah, she's lovely. All right. Had a nice couple of days. And then now. Just friends? She's gone back to Scotland. Just and then ignore that one, Matt. Ignore that one. Just friends? Oh, just. Hanging out. <laughs> cool. As friends? <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying quiet on the whole thing. Um, Tells us all we need to know. Uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was, I think for, for you, we all felt for you. And I think the interesting thing is, like one of my values, I'm sure it's for everyone, is honesty is a big deal. Like to start a relationship, and I mean friendship, anything with lies is is a no-go like it's never going to work for you guys it was part of the, the show premise how do you find that with your relationships with each other now like for example how do you genuinely feel about alex now knowing that that was a facade the whole time it's tough right so i know obviously that they were doing it for tv yeah but for me when i was in there and i think it's the same with you two as well we were all just ourselves like we weren't playing up to anything we were just being ourselves mm. and i think that's why us three get along so well mm. But then it was like, in my head, I was just like, right, afterwards now, going forward, like I know she's got the ability to do that. Do you know what I mean? So I've stayed a little bit more distant. How can you, tr- yeah, how can like, you trust somebody? Because when you're going into something being genuine, and this is the fascinating thing about the show, like you all signed up to it knowing there's going to be lying, there's going to be deceit, but you're also, like all of you are normal people that are being put in the spotlight you kind of want to get known for being a genuine person. I think we signed up to it not knowing what we yeah. were signing up to. It was, it, no, yeah, I was going to say it was quite difficult because they explained the actual narrative of the show in a very kind of like vague way. So before you actually go on so there, they started give you, lies. They lied to you. Basically, basically yeah. So they, give you, they give you a very like simple format and you think this is going to be so good. We're going to do these challenges. You're going to meet people. And then I think probably like, what, like day two, we were like, okay, this is actually genuinely serious. Like for us, we were sat there thinking like when we got there, we were going on like some kind of adventure holiday. Yeah, yeah. Like we were all like, we had loads of swimming yeah, stuff, no, didn't me, we? Me, me nice. and Matt, we were running around the castle on the first day knocking like vases over that had been there like 50 to 100 years. And they were like, <laughs> That was a couple thousand pounds and we we're like, oh, sorry. And then like in the- Did you have to pay? No, didn't. No. No, hey. well, ran the other way, knocked another one over. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. We're like we're just messing about. So and then it got to probably like, what, day day three when I had like a bit of a breakdown and then it was like, that's when everything it started. It was a moment really when Aaron broke serious. down. I was just like, I was like yeah. this is going to be like mind games. Yeah, the whole it just thing. got like, so like intense. Oh, right at the beginning when, was it Amos and Kieran immediately oh, we all, didn't make oh, it in the house? We were all shocked. Surely you knew then it's serious. Well, yeah, but also in our heads when that was happening, some of us were thinking that they were actors. Oh really? So we yeah. were like, we were like, oh no, they were just actors. They've done it to like get us in the mood. Do you know what I mean? Ah, like we right. had no idea that they were real people as well. Because like in our, f- there was points in it where we thought half the people in there were actors, and that that could be the concept. Yeah. Like, and we kept right. thinking people were actors always when they were. Yeah. Like, there was, was so one gnarly. point as well. There was uh, there was genuinely one point where you start kind of like second guessing absolutely everything. So by day three, they're like, I, I looked. I, I even remember saying to Claudia, I was like, is there actually any traitors in this, or is this some kind mm. of twisted mind game that you're trying to do on us, where everyone's a faithful? Because at that point, we didn't get anyone out yet. Mm. Um, so every, you just start second guessing everything. You start second guessing yourself, the people around you, and it all. That's I think. Start going, am I a traitor? I think yeah. I might be. Yeah. Who knows? I, I think for us, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, I'm a traitor. Faithful. It's I'm me. Faithful. <laughs> the croissants on the ba- breakfast table. Is that real? <laughs> I think for was us, though, like, real was it? It was. Yeah. I'm sure oh, yeah, you're not <laughs> it was like team is stuff some face. kind of like social experiment in our mm. heads. We were just like, right, do you know what? Like, this is insane because like we had no idea what we were signed up to. Mm-hmm. You were like being in Black Mirror or something like yeah, that. Yeah, got there yeah. and we were just like, right, this is Weird. it. This is our lives now for the next couple of weeks. Like, let's just see what happens. Did you think it would have the uh, impact that it did? Because we're talking, are we on like over 30 million? 60, joking. Million, like 60, 60 million now. 60 million views. Because of had. the iPlayer people watching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So people have, so when it, it was very good with the strategy on how they aired the show over Christmas and after the football and stuff like that. And the marketing technique was literally just like word of mouth. 
Like there was no adverts, no billboards, Which no is nothing. Like old school. Yeah, proper old school. I think Claudia must have done about three adverts. One was yeah. in the f- between the football. Yeah. She was literally sat in an England shirt saying tune in. That was like the biggest marketing thing they did. And then it just obviously absolutely blew up. But I feel like people, because they can binge it now, yeah. you're getting taken on that story straight through. Whereas oh, I binged all... like seven episodes in a day yeah. after Boxing Day, something like that. So people are just literally binging it. And like, and it's just growing and growing. And, and it's growing genuinely growing. got more viewings than Love Island. Look, way over. I'm a celebrity. I'm a celebrity. Surpassed. I'm a yes. celebrity. Like, wow. didn't they? I, I don't quite understand, but it, it said something like the market share for um, I'm a celeb was on like eighteen or nineteen percent, and we had like seventy two percent. Something <gasps> ridiculous. I don't understand what, how them stats work, but I remember seeing it. It like, sounds good. No just go with it. Way. Yeah. <laughs> like it was. It was wow. ridiculous. So. Like, yeah, we made some good TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we made some good TV. Yeah, we did actually. <laughs> I don't understand any of it. I just said <laughs> it. It just shows just up. <laughs> <laughs> good work, guys. How's, how's that been, though? Like, knowing that you just getting together for, what, 12 days and just being in a bit of a social experiment is something that... Well. 60 million people have engaged with and been enthralled by. Like, I don't think like, we ever thought it was going to be this big, did we? No. Like, we kind Never. of thought that it was like... I think in my head, anyway, I was like, oh, if it's like as big as The Apprentice, yeah, yeah. then it's We're like, good. then that's good for us. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or like Master Chef or something like that. Playing at it then. And then it's like, I was like, I was like, it's never going to be like a Love Island kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was like, in my head, it was never going to get to that point. And yeah. then now it's like, it's crazy. We're like sat here doing a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now you've made it. Yeah. <laughs> we all. Let's go. Hi, mum. <laughs> Hello, mum. <laughs> <laughs> what you said there about. Um, you know, you, you referred to it as you had a bit of a breakdown, Aaron, and I know you're referring to around the round table, the time when you had to leave and, and go outside. Yeah. Tell us about that. Was that, was it a panic attack? Yeah, so the thing is, at the, so at the time, obviously I can't say too much about like kind of like off the screen sort of stuff, but you're at that round table and obviously everyone has to kind of give like their opinions and like voice what they think. Mm. Um, I'd never mean ever put, so even before like the traitors, I, my friendship circle, we don't fall out. Like I, I sometimes look at girls and I'm like, these girls like they're bickering like all the time. Like their groups always splitting off. Me and my best mates, we never argue. Like I've known them for years and we've never ever ever come to a point where we're like shouting at each other. Yeah. So me getting put in that situation was very strange. Yeah. But you guys only see like there's a couple of people like John and Maddie actually like going in on us. At the time, there must have been like eight or nine people just giving it, giving it, giving it. Right, because it's edited down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, oh, was you going in as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, th- like you looked Thea really going... nice and chill. Yeah, <laughs> they just cut that out. Right? Yeah, and then um, and then obviously like they're going around the table, and I'd never had a panic attack before, so I didn't know really what was happening. Really, and like, I was trying to like I don't really like the only way I could explain it is like if you breathed in like all your air, and then I was still trying to gulp for more air, and then I think. You see it at one point, like Amanda puts, goes to put her uh, like, hand on my leg and it just triggered me and I was like, I need to get out because I feel like everything was closing in. Um, but yeah, then I, I was outside, the welfare team like helped me out and everything. But I, I didn't even know. Like when John afterwards was just like, why did you leave? I was like, I don't know. Like I genuinely didn't know yeah. at the time like what had happened. I didn't know the experience. I, I like, was clueless. Um, so yeah, for me, that was kind of, that was just a bit of a surreal moment. I haven't had one since either. So it kind of <laughs> tells you. Must have been pretty scary though, you know. And again, when you're in that intense environment, pressure, people are looking at you and then something starts happening that's never happened before. Yeah. Yeah. And also you don't, everyone in there, you genuinely do get like such a strong bond to. So like imagine if it's like you and me were just like chilling for a few days and then at one point I just start going in on you for like no I'm I'm basically going you wore that jacket you wore this that and the next blah blah, blah. like for no yeah. reason you're like they're lying like they know they're lying like what what's going on but they're going off such small bits of information that they don't know themselves what's true and what's a lie right. so they're just running with it and it, they have like you know it's a bit of a pack mentality as well like well this is, this is for me it raised that question of like what you said there about like pack mentality how people can get stuff so wrong yeah. like i don't want to get all political and stuff but you know like there's things that happen around the world where everybody's saying yes okay that's the right answer and everybody just follows I and mean, we, we yeah. get extreme polarizing views and i think that show just really demonstrated kind of how easy someone can just say something plant a seed and then from that, you've suddenly got everyone going, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I agree with you. And yeah, actually, yeah. it was totally right. I mean, Maddie, I mean, how much was Maddie going in on you? Well, yeah, this is the, like, I think through the whole like show, she, she's probably a, a good reason for the reason like I want to be honest with you. Like the fact that she just <laughs> get putting so much heat on me all the time. The traitors were thinking, well, we're not going to take him out because he's taking like all the heat off of us yeah, at the yeah. moment. So she was probably a good reason why I stayed. 
but yeah like even like i mean nikki like in the first episode like one person said one thing and next thing she had like 19 votes to her name and i was just like bloody hell does it make I think that was all alyssa's fault that was yeah. Was it Alyssa's fault? It was Alyssa's fault. Oh, yeah, because of the glass thing. Yep. Um, so, actually, I'll tell you a little... So, we got just, shown... Just, can we just note Matt brought it back to Alyssa again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just friends, Alyssa. Matt. Just friends. Sorry, carry on. The glass. He's sweating now. He's sweating. <laughs> He's Sorry, sweating. Matt. Sorry. Um, no, but just to, like, just to show you how much a small thing can make a big impact, we were actually shown the Dutch version like a few months earlier. And in that first episode, the first round table... The traitors that take their masks off, two of them take a sip of water. So at that point, Will goes, can we all take a sip of water? So no one thinks. But obviously, Nikki was the only person that didn't, obviously, because she's only got one hand. Then Alyssa mm, raises yeah, it. Yeah. And then from that point onward, that's that had a knock-on effect to then um, me not voting for Nikki, like Maddie then going for me. So I'm literally like thanking wow. the Dutch version because they didn't, like they picked yeah. their glasses up and it just has a knock-on effect. From that one so thing. Yeah. The, the butterfly the effect. Glass. It's the, the, yeah. the butterfly paradox. It's like yeah. where like one small thing happens and then it just like changed the whole thing. But yeah, sorry. I forgot even what you asked now. So. I have as well. But I got on a rant. I, I just got on a rant. Do a rant. It sounds good. It sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so the actual traitors, obviously, we've got um, Alyssa, we've got Wilfred, we've got Amanda, and then at the end, Kieran. Kieran was the doctor. Yeah. How do you guys feel about those, Matt, Alyssa? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I won't do it again. I won't do it again. How How do you feel like knowing they kept that up it, in terms of like afterwards? Now, does, like do I got a funny story about this, right? Because none of us ever expected Alyssa to be one, did we? No. And then it was that morning where that big breakfast happened. Yeah. And us three were in a car together, um, going to one of the challenges, and then Alyssa was in a car with Tom and Alex, and we were like, God, we feel so bad for Alyssa. Having to be in the car with like because at that point we were like one of them two has Vince, to be a yeah. traitor. Right, so okay. we were like we were like we feel so bad for her being in the car, but and she was one. Oh, but us three were in the car going, how is she going in there on her own? <laughs> like yeah. getting like livid. <laughs> and it was just like we were so wrong. How does it like? Do you trust those guys? Like, how do you feel about? Because like you, you three are, are clearly with everything you say, genuinely nice people, and you went in there just being yourselves. Yeah. You didn't have a game plan as such. No, not of us. I mean, I mean, in particular, Wilfred. Like, I mean, at the end, he was like, "I swear on my life, I'm not a traitor." He's crying. It's like absolutely he is an Oscar. threw everything into it. How like. Do we he's, trust Wilfred or not? How do we feel? He's actually quite a nice lad outside of out of the game. He's quite funny. Is he, but is he though? Well, yeah, well, he How do you, you know the game's <laughs> ended? It's a social <laughs> it's experiment. <still> <laughs> um, but I feel like he needs an Oscar. He's, he was very good at it. He was, but then again, without him, the show probably wouldn't have been as good as it was because he right. was phenomenal at the game. But I think Alyssa found it the hardest being one. She did struggle with it, especially mm. when she left. But um, she's a genuinely really nice person as well. Funny, hilarious. She's got good banter. I think Amanda was just, she had no care in the world. She was just a savage. Like She just, she just seems so nice. They're, they're all they're I all couldn't nice believe people. any, yeah. like, he, all of them three, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. The yeah. Was right, so there was one point where I was sat in there and I was like, right, I know Aaron's like my best mate, but like, what happens if it's Aaron? And yeah. I was just yeah. like, I was just like, it can't be Aaron. Like, I'm sure it can't be, but it might be. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, but it's not. <laughs> and I was just like, in the back of my head, and I was thinking, like, who it could have been. I always thought it was Faye, deep down. Yeah, quite a few of it. I don't know why. I don't know why I thought it was Faye, but I did. And then no, I never would have thought it was I think you do have to remember, though. Like, obviously, everyone went in there. At, like, it was a game at the end of the day. So everyone had to, like, they play their role. If they didn't play their role, then at the end of the day, they wouldn't have got as far as they would have got. Of course, yeah. So even going back to kind of, like, the whole Tom and Alex situation, like, but, like, everyone says, like, ah, oh, they were, like, disfavored, all this, that next thing. In my head, I actually think what they did was actually quite, like, not a lot of couples would be able to go into a TV show, especially being a guy, trusted your girlfriend to be able to flirt with another guy and then come back and, like, be okay with that. I think, like, it takes quite a lot of, mm. you know, balls to actually do that. Is it so, balls, though, or is it just strange? Well, you, you, I'm like, all right it's, for it's that. Kind of, it's kind I don't like, want to be doing that. Yeah, no, I wouldn't you want to go you, in with my missus would, what, and my missus be all over him. Yeah. And then, is I that would me have been, cool? I But, like, I think you have to have livid. so much, like, trust. Like, have you ever had that thing where you've, like, gone out with your missus, right, and then she's gone to the bar to get the drinks and you've seen another bloke like trying it on her every yes and yeah, it's horrible on, no, it's and it's horrible no 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 because i said this to tom when i was there but it's like it's like you go and then you're just like i feel awkward and like i know it's fine i know it's all right but it's like it's, it's weird, weird to watch in it like imagine doing that for days on end like i was just like, i was like i said to tom i was like i said to tom i was like i don't know you've done it i was like i would have like I can't remember what he said. He's got pink hair. But like... <laughs> <laughs> well, that was his reason. <laughs> like, I was just like... But yeah. 
I was just like, I don't know. Well, when I met him, I thought he was on my team. I was like, yeah, he's yeah. De- pink hair, quite charming. He's definitely gay. Oh, no, he's not gay. That's his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Well, that was uh, weird. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving to like, talking talking about being gay, Theo. Oh. You, you go. You, no, you. Theo. <laughs> Me? Gay, We're not spooning you last night. You you on bed? <laughs> just spooning. Um, <laughs> you said quite an emotional speech ar- around the the dinner table not the round table yeah. about acceptance and you, you know it was i know a really moving part of the show is where you sort of said you know it's it's never easy being gay and you know we're in a modern world and so on but it still doesn't make it easy is that was that one of the reasons you wanted to do a show like this is for that acceptance and sort of to mm. be accepted for who you are yeah i think so. um I'm, it's mo- it's lo- it's loads of reasons i just think okay. it's I don't know. I think I had two glasses of Prosecco and a glass of wine and it just, just got all came. <laughs> it got, came all. We was had two drinks a day. So to have more, I was like, bleh, bleh, word vomit. I just think um, it's still a tough world we live in. It's, uh, for anybody, for race, for sexuality, it's just very tough. Especially when you're like a, from a black family. Some like black families don't accept gay people because it's yeah. sort of like traditional and stuff like that. Um, but... I've been lucky enough to have a very supportive family, very supportive network, my mum, my sister, meeting people like this. Mm. Um, And I just think it's not talked about enough. Um, Still in a modern world, it's still hard. It's still hard for people. Still get people coming out at like the age of bloody 70 odd because they found it so tough. Yeah, yeah. And people, opinions are opinions. You're entitled to them, I get that. But at the end of the day, if somebody wants to live their life the way they do, just let them do it. Like, let them be who they want to be. No matter if they want to put a big glittery earring in or... Just let them be. It's not affecting somebody else's day at the end of the day. Um, Have you had bad experiences, like when when you was growing up and yeah, all, people not accepting all the you? time? Like I hated high school, went to socialise. I got bullied from like nine out ti- nine times out of ten. Can't speak. Like I'm not doing a sob story, but it's horrible. I came out when I was, I think it was. Uh, I'm not gonna cry. So don't. Yeah, no, I can see. I can <laughs> see you going. <laughs> I think it's true. Oh, hold on, okay. slow down. A I was bit, like, you know, what, you know, what, it's getting <laughs> to that point again. I was like, yeah. I sat forward as well. I was like, oh no, it's going to happen. <laughs> no, I'm doing it. We've got doing tissue. It. Like, back on the all over Honestly. again. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've gone from horrible sh- sh- shit, and there's just no need for it. Like, I don't, I don't know. I just, yeah, life is life, and I just, it's made me tougher. It's made me stronger, and I couldn't give a shit what Julie thinks over there. I really don't care. At the end of the day, I'm Sorry, doing Julie. me. Sorry, Julie. Um, but, <laughs> but obviously we're having, we are having a bit of banter about it and so on, but what, what are we talking about? Like what's some of the worst stuff that you personally experienced? I think for me was like high school, probably the toughest one, like being called a faggot and gay and stuff like that. Um, you don't fit in with us and all that stuff. I'm n- I've never spoke about this to any, not even my mum. Like I don't, and then just like struggling with me liking boys as well. Like I'm known from a young age. I mean, I tried my mum's bra on when I was like nine, <laughs> but- um, Did it fit? It, yeah, I was it, gonna say. <laughs> it did fit, I've got a better- I don't know, why, we, why are we intrigued yeah. by that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need to have a talk <laughs> to get this out. <laughs> but, it's true what they say, your mum's always know. Like I'd rip my mum a letter and left it on a bed and she's like, she just came and gave me the tightest hug. And if oh, it well, just- that, that was how you actually came, came out. Yeah, lip, how old on, were you? I was 17, I think, 17, 18. Yeah. Um, Cheer, cheerleading actually helped me become who I am. The people around the, in the cheer club that I was at the time helped me become who I am today. Um, but it's just, you never want to, you find, you feel different to everybody else. You feel like you don't fit in with somebody. Like being in the closet, so to speak, is you're like, how do you get out of, how do you get out of this? How do you become normal? How do you fit into the normal society? Because I don't, I'm not going to give my mum a kid. I'm never going to do that. I mean, I can adopt, but I'm not bothered about kids. I'm not going to have a normal marriage. Like mm. it's just, it's or oh, kind of a traditional, traditional marriage, I guess. Yeah, it, like, yeah, it's just, it's hard. It's you're always thinking. Every time I walk into a room, I'm always thinking, "Am I too much? Am I too? Li- how do I fit in with this new group of people?" And you I shouldn't still have, feel that now. Yeah, I shouldn't have to feel that. I shouldn't have to walk into a family event and feel like, "Oh, I feel very slightly awkward." Like my mum's family. Ace, but I don't really talk to get along with my dad or anything like that. If I walked into a thing in like a family event with him, I'd be like, how, how do I feel comfortable in this? And mm. I shouldn't have to feel like that at all in any situation, in any environment, going to a new job. Like, nah, it's just, that's why I want to hopefully be 
follow my dreams, become a presenter, and just show people like I've come from hell, yeah, and you can be successful. That's what's so good is you are open to talk about that as much as, and that's why you know, and thank you for sharing that. That's why I wanted to ask about that because there'll be people in that position right now, you know, whether they be seventeen or whatever, and it is important to have people like you that share that story and say, listen, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, what you mm. want out of life, like you can still be successful, you can still have a great, 100%. happy life. I, th I think if I can always help somebody, that's the main thing. I think the the 110% main thing is having a good support network. Like yeah. I cannot thank my mum or my sister. They've literally yeah. had me from the get go. When I've got a crazy idea, whatever it to be, some, I don't know, some random like, are you sure you're gonna do that? Can you brace yourself? And I've got a good partner who looks after me and it's just, yeah, I think support is the key thing, the yeah. key thing and that's, yeah. That's what, who I am today now because of Beauty. that. Nice. Aaron, you were speaking before. Are you all right? God, yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah, no, I just, wanted to say, I just wanted to say, like, yeah. just touching on that as well. Like, obviously, you're just saying about being supported and stuff. I think Theo is probably one of the biggest guys that's come from the show and always checked in. So, like, obviously, with the roller coaster that the show gave, Theo was always there, like, like asking, like, how's everything? Like, just checking in, like, every few days to making sure, like, that you're actually all right. Mm -hmm. And I think by far more than anybody else, like it was Theo that was there actually to do that. So it is actually just nice to see someone like you doing that. Oh, yeah, you. I think for like me and Aaron, you've been like a pretty big rock. Cause you we, we can be them. a little bit like, <laughs> we can be a little bit childish from time to time. <laughs> and uh, bags under my eyes after this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause you but all yeah. stayed together this week. Yeah. You? yeah. <laughs> How's that going? We still got two, three more days. Uh, yeah. so <laughs> We're not done yet. <laughs> Oh, and you crying. and you were just saying you're at the Brits this weekend. Yeah. Do you think you'll make it to the Brits together? Are we all getting on okay? Oh yeah, 100%. yeah I reckon we'll be right. It's, it's if we end up in the same place, that'll be the yeah. We'll that's the question. And I'll be like, it's Theo, where, like where are you? He'll be like, I don't know. Where's Matt? I'll be like, I don't know. <laughs> me, me and Aaron got lost this morning and just about found our way back. Already got lost. Where were you? We're in Leeds and then we ended up down. Like, I don't even know where we went and got yeah. cracked so, this and morning. There was a lot didn't of gentlemen's we? clubs and we were like, we're not supposed to be here. Oh, I know, I know the road. And everyone just kept staring at us. Everyone's like. Oh, and I was like, right. and they, they know we're not supposed to be here either. And I'm like, God, get us out of this place. Can't relate to that. I don't know. The Why road. were you taking them to the gentleman's club? Uh, <laughs> 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 no, to get lost. No, we did a surprise. I surprised them this morning. Uh, we went to an oste osteopath, osteopath and we got our bones cracked and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, surprise. Nice. And we all got relieved. But we had no idea <laughs> what we were way. signing up to. <laughs> We had no idea. Yeah, and then no we've idea. got to wherever he dropped me the pin to go, this street, and we just saw Gentleman's Club, Gentleman's Club, Gentleman's Club. Me and Aaron were like, what are we doing here? Like, it's like <laughs> 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning. We were like, what are we doing here? It was like, good, though. <laughs> I feel loose now. Do you feel good? I feel good. You feel loose? Always no, it, there's always innuendos from Theo. We know no, exactly, no, exactly what you're doing. I'm thinking. We know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. So, looking back on the show... Is there any regrets on how you played it? Is there anything any of you would do differently? Matt, how about you? I didn't really know what was going on from <laughs> the start. <laughs> do you now? No. <laughs> uh, it was on his holidays. Do you know it was on TV? Or? Like, <laughs> me watching it back is, like, quite funny, though, because, like, the only bit that I actually find interesting is the bit where you're in the diary room, because that's the bit that, obviously, none of us saw what each mm -hmm. other said mm -hmm. in right, there. Right, okay, yeah, So yeah. that's where it's, like, quite interesting. Yeah. But the rest of it, I'm just like... I was there. I mean, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I remember it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I called you Slack, didn't I bless you? Oh, uh, yeah, you called me, he called me Slack. When I first met him. I was like, bless And him. then everyone on, on there <laughs> and everyone who, they all thought I was way cleverer. Cleverer. Oh, yeah, like you're yeah. putting on an act. Yeah, like they all what thought. What about Maddie? Has Maddie put on an act at all? Is she genuinely Stacey like that? Stacey Sullivan, you mean? Yeah, yeah. No, she's she? just like that. Yeah, she's really? genuinely like yeah. ditzy and, yeah, she's funny. But I think everyone thought I was way smarter than what I am and I was like, nah, like, I got a B. In my GCSEs, and I don't that's have any right. A levels. Do you know what I mean? B's are all right. Do you don't like, think GCSEs to be successful? Though? Yeah, that's, that's exactly true. what I like that. about. So yeah. yeah, bringing it back. Yeah. Talking about that, get out of school, kids. Yeah, all get right. out of school. <laughs> <laughs> Leave now. Get on TV. It's so easy. <laughs> what um, if you? It's kind of like, let's go in some of the um the questions, general live questions, and so on. Because I know you're doing a lot of interviews and so on about the traitors. There's loads of interviews. You can go check them out. But let's talk a bit more about life and, and your experiences and so on. As you look back now, if you was to sort of, it's like that question of looking back at your 17-year-old, 18-year-old self. What would be the main advice? We'll get an answer from all of you. Matt, if we start with you, what would you say? Well, start from that end. I need time. You need to time think. to think. Aaron, think. what would be um, your main advice? Um, <sighs> I, and, and what I'm talking about is just to generally like, have a good life like if you was to look back at younger self maybe you had self-doubt or worries fears what would you say to yourself probably like don't put too much pressure on myself because i remember when i was younger i used to put a lot of pressure on myself um and just 
be a good person. Like you'll get so much further in life just being a good general person. Yeah. Um, what was the pressure that you used to put on yourself? Pre- I used to, I used to go through like, um, I don't know why, but I used to put this thing in my head where I always used to think that I was the one that was going to have to eventually like, step up and look after the family. Um, so I always wanted to get to a point where I could, like, I was, I'll have my own business, working 60, 70 hours a week. Um, which where did that come from? That, that fear? I don't actually, I don't know. This is the thing. Like I, when, so I moved over from Spain when I was like 17 years old. And then from doing that, I was in the UK by myself for a good part of a year. And I think in that year I grew so much, but I also kind of learned to live by myself, but I'm quite a sociable person. So I think I just put a lot of, I I was really like tough on myself. um, And I just said to myself, like, look, you just need to get through these next few years, you know, get your degree and then you can just like get a business for yourself. So eventually you can just, I just always wanted, like I still even like to to, to this day, I always wanted to support my family, like my my mum, my brother, even like my dad, like I want to put them in a situation where they do not have to worry about anything in life. They can always just call me up and go, Aaron, have you got, and I can just help them out. Um, so I, I don't know where it came from. Even it's it's funny because I wouldn't say like most of my like my mum and dad. I've never put that into me and my brother. And my brother's three years younger than me now, and I can see that's already getting ingrained into him. I can already see really? he's he's already picking up them patterns. Like he wakes up at like four thirty in the morning. He hits the gym. He comes back. He ends up reading a book, does a podcast, then starts doing like work. And he's just like he's just consistent every single day. And I think about a couple of years ago, I was doing exactly the same thing. But eventually, you just run yourself into the ground. It's just not good for you. So yeah. I think sometimes you do have to be a bit selfish, but. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't actually know where it came from. But that, that's a really great point, though. It's something that I talk about quite a bit on this podcast, and it, and I reflect on. I went down a similar path, mm-hmm. and it kind of got me thinking. Like, there's a question I think about a lot, which is: Is having ambition a blessing or a curse? Because having that Im- ambition inside of you to do more, to be able to provide, yeah. it's kind of like you would think that's a good thing. Someone mm-hmm. that's driven and that's ambitious. Mm-hmm. But then what you're saying there, it's it's this like enormous pressure that mm-hmm. you start to put on yourself. So how bad did that get? What when I mean, you say they, you stop? So they came to a point. So I so so whilst I was at uni, um, I was doing I was studying petroleum engineering, and by the end of the second year, I knew in myself that morally I didn't want to go down that path because it was right. working with like oil and gas, etc. And I knew eventually further down the line that I wanted to have like um, my own like property portfolio, etc. So I decided to then jump onto. Um, being a self-employed estate agent whilst also whilst I was at uni. I think I started in Feb. Uh, actually, 14th of February, I remember, because it was Valentine's Day. Right. Um, Coming up to your anniversary. Yeah, well. <laughs> and uh, so so I, I ended up becoming a self-employed estate agent. I was juggling that, and then I was also juggling my like degree at the same time. And even going down that, like I remember... Obviously, when you're self-employed, you have to do it all yourself. You don't get paid unless you actually put the work in yourself. Mm. And I remember, like, there was a phase where I was like, right, I'm just going to see how many days I can work for without before I take a day off. And I think I did, like, five weeks. And the day I stopped, I didn't feel ill, but the next day I woke up and I just crashed for about two just days, think, yeah. just completely out of it. And that's just because I just didn't rest. But in my head, I was just like, just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. Like, it's not like I would, like, say to you, oh, no, you have to keep going. It was in my brain. I'd wake up every morning. It was like, in, in, like I would wake up and it'd be like, no, just get out of bed now. Like, I would just naturally just do it. Yeah. Whereas if you said that to me now, I'd be like, no, I'm staying in bed. Like, leave me alone, please. But like, What's changed? But, yeah. Um, do you know what? It, it's, it's what I was going back to earlier, not putting too much pressure on myself and yeah. just enjoy it in it. Because so you had that realisation that it's 100%. not worth it. Yeah, 100%. Because you get to, like... And also being in that world, because I used to sell like kind of um, nice houses, you know, like luxury houses, like million pound houses and stuff. I would, I would always be around people that were buying million pound houses and I'd be around these mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. and I'd be like, at what point is too much money too much? Like you, 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 I when see is, these when people. When is it enough? Yeah, like I yeah. see these people and I'm like, you're no happier than I was three months ago and you're driving around in a McLaren P1, yeah. um, but you're stressing about this person and that person. Yeah. And it's like, so in my head, it's like I either go the whole way and I'll know I become a multimillionaire or I just do nothing and go the other way and just go, I'm just going to completely enjoy my life and that's it. And be so, present. Yeah, exactly. And just enjoy it because being in the middle where you're chasing it constantly, but you're not quite there, that is that is just really, really hard. And I think it takes a a very strong-willed person to be able to kind of keep pushing through. And even then people, you, not everyone ends up making it anyway. So it just yeah, becomes, yeah. it just, yeah, it's it's difficult. It's definitely difficult. When you were around the mil- millionaires, did you have any exposure to any, like seeing people that didn't have the best of intentions, any scammers, things like that? Because I've got a similar thing where I was coached by somebody a few years oh, yeah. ago. I was, yeah, so I was working for And it's all a facade, it's all bullshit. Yeah, 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 so I was working for one. So 
when I was um, when I went through this, um, so I was I was with them for about eight months. So I started on fourteenth of February, was doing that. And like, unless you know really about like a state agency, you wouldn't know these numbers are as good as they are. Mm. But I think so. I had never touched a state agency in my life, and for the first two or three months, hadn't even sold a house. By the eighth month, I'd already brought in eighty four thousand pounds worth of fees, and in one quarter, I did fifty two thousand pounds. Now, if you went into like an office down the road where there's five or six people working, their their goal on a monthly like target is probably like. 15 to 20 grand and i did buy myself like 52 yeah so i was i and that's at the, fa- the time when i was like you know working every single right. day flat out because and it kind of actually um goes into the fact of like me wanting to give the money back to my mom at the time i worked so hard because i wanted to give money to my mom mm-hmm. um so she could put a deposit down on the house um but eventually like i got to that point where i you know like the guy that was above me um, he was driving around like Lamborghinis and you know flashing cash and stuff like that. Rolex and watches, exactly yeah. all yeah. of this. And I literally and I, and I remember like looking at him and I was like, I don't actually genuinely think you're happy. I think you're trying to put this on so everyone else thinks you're this certain person. Yeah. But deep down, you're actually not happy. It's usually that kit. That's what I've learned. It's mm-hmm. usually they're doing that from a place of insecurity. There's yeah. something within, whether it be from the past, whether it be the the you know how they look and how they feel about the look this constant striving for, I need more, I need better, I need to have, you know, Gucci or Louis Vuitton, what, like, why? Mm-hmm. Where's that coming from? Like, is it really adding value to your life or is it more you feel a certain level of something is lacking within you that you're trying to make up for with the money? Yeah, well, and even even just to, like, just, like, touch on as well there, like, I ended up, eventually, there was one week where I, I was meant to have, I think it was, like, 1.9 million of houses um, meant, meant to complete and when it completes it basically means when you hand over the keys for the next owners come in and as a self-employed estate agent don't get paid until that day mm. so you end up you end up getting the house selling the house going through all of the sales progression which can sometimes take up to 14 weeks so i did all of this work and all the work yeah and all of this work and this guy basically just cut me out of the business to take my like my cut of the commission which was like 25 oh. grand at the time what? and that sounds really messed up and it did play on me so bad for like weeks and weeks but how long ago is this it was must have been so it, it was literally a few no this must have been now coming up well say so is it a year ago no two years ago it'll be two years ago like yeah. when i yeah two years ago um or a year and a half ago now so it was just before i actually like went on the traders yeah, about four yeah, months yeah. before i went on the traders but the day that it actually happened i had so much pressure lifted off to me because i didn't have to worry about all of these houses going through i didn't have to worry about the money or anything like that at all like for once i actually felt like relieved in like eight months it was wow. crazy so the day that you didn't get the 25 grand the you day that I got owed, cut out of the business i was, was the just day like, you felt better yeah and i was just like i just like it, it, it feels weird but like i actually was sitting in bed and i was like this is shit i'm not going to get this 25 grand but equally I'm so like relieved right now. Like I just wow. like it was it was that stressful, and you don't know that until kind of you're out of it. So you understand um, how Wilfred felt on that day when he didn't get his money. <laughs> mate, <laughs> it's like tra- oh the pressure's gone. I yeah, yeah, faithful. yeah, yeah, definitely. And like even you know going back to like that, like I genuinely wanted Will to take. I wanted him to be a faithful so bad. I wanted him to be a faithful so bad. I was so disappointed when it came out that he was a traitor because I genuinely did want him to have like a, a slice of the cake. Um, but it just turns out he's a dirty little traitor. (laughs) Hey everyone, just a super quick break from the main chat as I've got something really important that I think you should probably know about. For years, I just felt like my life was coasting along. I wasn't clearing what I wanted and I wasn't fully achieving the life that I knew I could lead. Ultimately, I got overweight. I wasn't making much money and I was in an unfulfilling relationship. But one day I decided to do something about it. And I began taking action and working seriously on this thing that they call personal development. And this is what completely changed literally every single area of my life. And today it's the reason why I created the success school membership. The key pillars that you need to achieve more in your life is getting the correct information, having the right network of people around you and having the accountability so that you are being held accountable to keep on taking the correct action consistently over time. And that is exactly what Success School gives you. And it gives you that for just a cheap subscription price because I got tired of seeing all these coaches and gurus and courses that cost thousands and thousands of pounds. And I thought, you know what, this needs to become way more accessible for way less. So right now you can try before you buy with a completely free 14 day trial. And after then, if you want to stay a member, if you get value out of it, it is just 
£19 per month. And in there, you're going to find so much value from our WhatsApp group to the training videos all on mindset to the interviews that we get with guest experts in nutrition, health, well-being, fitness, and so much more. But you also get bonus extra behind the scenes content and exclusive members only interviews with our guests, just like the people that we've got on today. So click the link right now in the show notes to start your free trial. Come and join us and I'll look forward to seeing you there. Now, let's get back to the main chat. Theo, what about you? What's the main looking back advice you'd give? Um, I would say, oh, I don't know. <sighs> Come on, Theo, you've had ages to think about it. I've got, <laughs> pass it on to Matt. Pass it on to Matt. Matt go on, said he's, it. he's at, he's, he's oh, at time now. You go next. You go next. I'm I'll go last. Do. Yeah, you I've done my thinking. <laughs> right, you, I was too busy. I, mean, I was involved. I was in listening to his story I was, like, going. Involved, like, I was listening to his story yeah. going. Right. Okay, I'm what am I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just started rambling then. I don't even think you guys knew that. So, so what is it? If you was to go back to your younger self, yeah, seventeen-year-old me, yeah, one piece of life advice, yeah, what would you right. say to yourself? Basically, so it's kind of split off into like two things for me, right? One, find something you really enjoy doing, and then just do it. Like it doesn't matter mm. whether you're getting paid to do it, whether you're not getting paid to do it. If that makes you happy, do it because then you'll know whatever's happening. You could just then go off and do that, and it will cheer you up, regardless. Nice. But then the other thing with that, because with me, that's riding my bike. Like, I know yeah. riding my bike makes me happy. And then I've been really lucky to be in the position that I'm in mm. to be able to go and travel doing it and all that kind of stuff. But going back to when I was 17, sleep in the back of your car, Matt. Don't spend any money and just go and travel. Because really? that's all I was doing. I passed my driving test and that was it. There was a bed in the back of the car with the boys driving around the country, driving around Europe, going to all these different skate parks, riding your bike. And it was good because it was like, for me as a kid, like I was like pretty nervous about that kind of thing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm, yeah. Still am like a little bit nervous every now and again, but it's just like, I was there and I was just like, right, I'm going to scare myself kind of like once a day with that kind of thing. So it was just like, okay, cool. Like I've never done this before. Don't that see idea why. of push yourself out of your comfort zone. Just kind of, like you never try. have to push yourself too far. Yeah. Like the traitors thing, like when we went to go and get on the plane to go there, like I nearly turned around at the gate because I was just like, I don't know if I can do this. Really? Like I was just like, I was like, I don't know what I'm signed up to here. Like I'm at Gatwick Airport. I've not got a clue what's going on. Nothing's changed. Like still yeah. normal, <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like I was there and I was just like, right, like I need to kind of, I'm just going to get on the flight. And then when, the minute I got on the plane and sat down, mm. I was just like, right. I was like, I can't turn around now. Yeah. Like, they've shut the door. We're like, in, this is off. it. I'm off. Yeah. So with that one, it was like a bit of a bigger step because I knew it wasn't like a day thing. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to get there and then I've got to be there for however long. Yeah. But like, that was like the thing. And then for me growing up, it was just like, okay, cool. Like, I've never done this. I'm just going to give it a go. Mm -hmm. If it don't work out, it don't work out. But like nine times out of 10, it does. And then you'll even know that you like it or you don't like it. I and mean, then you can do it again or not do it at all. That takes a certain level of self belief, though, doesn't it? Because I think you could only go and do that if you had this belief in the back of your mind that whatever happens I'll be okay so it's kind of believing there's always, there's always running a risk like I know that yeah and like especially with riding my bike as well like knowing okay cool if I'm gonna jump off that and jump to there like what's the likelihood that like you don't make it or you go too far yeah, yeah. or anything like that so you so run the risk a calculated risk yeah nine times out of ten yeah and it's just like okay cool like don't go and do something stupid yeah like if I told you to jump off a cliff Probably not a good idea. But if it was only four foot off the floor, you'd do it. All right, yeah. See what I mean? Do that, yeah. So it's like, you, you'd run the risk of it. You'd look and then you'd go, okay, cool, I could do that. Yes. But if it was 300 foot, you'd be like, mm, probably not. Yeah. Like, not the best idea I've ever had. <laughs> there's something, there's something um, you said there that, that I think is an interesting topic because there's this idea of like when you are 17 or 18, whatever, it's like, don't worry, just go traveling, experience life while you're still young. But then there's another school of thought, which is like, they're your best years to build your foundations, i.e., yeah. you know, build a business, make money, so you've got the solid foundations so that by the time you may be 30, 31, you're still relatively young. You can still travel, but you've got the the foundations laid. What I do mean, you think I about think, that? I reckon it's just like, it's regardless of how old you are, just go and do it. Always travel. Like, not always what travel, just money, go and though? do what whatever about you want. building something substantial so that you can... That that's like a different thing for me because it's like there's two ways to go about that. You can either go and do the nine to five and then have your kind of like when you're out of work, go and do your thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Whereas for me, it was like before the traders, I worked in Amazon for four months, packing boxes. 
And then after that, then I'd just shut up shop until I ran out of money, go and get my van, drive around and then just be like riding my bike, doing this and that, like little odd jobs and stuff like that. And then the minute you run out of money, it's okay, cool. I'm going back to Amazon to pack boxes again or back to a little so coffee you shop. you always knew. You see, I love that. It's a great point. Like the nine to five will always be there. There's always going to be a job if you want to go and get a job. Yeah. But like, there's not pe- always people are, like, to try Everyone stuff. is looking for people to go to work at the minute. Like you can go on Indeed and there's a million jobs that are there just waiting for people to be sat in. Yeah. But I don't want to go to work for like, I don't know, however many hours a week, yeah. 45, 50 Being hours a week. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas like, I know that if I do run out of money, then I'm going to get to that point of being like, okay, cool. I could go work in a bike shop mm, or I could go yeah, work yeah. in a coffee shop or go back to Amazon. Like, Amazon was a sick one because it was just like, I loved it because you're just there with your headphones in. You don't have to chat to anyone. Yeah. You're there from four in the morning to one in the afternoon. Then you've got your afternoon off. You can go and do whatever you want with that. And then you're there for like five, six days a week. Do that for six to eight weeks. Then after that, you've made enough money to go off and just do whatever you want again. Oh man, I love that. You may as well go and take a risk, do the stuff you enjoy, try stuff because there's that mindset there that you can And then nine times out of 10, if you're doing the hobby that you love as well, if you work out a way to monetize that, that's then when you'll work it out. Boom. Which is the point where I'm like trying to get to at the minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's just like, I, I know there's no money in riding bikes. Mm-hmm. Like I know that. But there's there has to be a way somewhere that then bikes can then be integrated into the mainstream. Mm-hmm. Which like, I've done like stunt doubling in films and stuff like that. And that's like good because that's like a big money gig. You work on that for a couple of months, meet loads of people. It's lovely. It's amazing. Mm. And then you know after that, okay, cool. I can have three months off now because yeah, yeah, I've yeah. made that amount of money. Yeah. So it's like, that's the way that I do it. But Love I it. just think that's how I've been ever since I was 17. That was when I had my first film job. So it's like, mm. I left school to just ride my bike. Don't leave school, kids. <laughs> Stay in school. <laughs> leave school earlier. So. <laughs> leave here. Just leave. Uh, <laughs> Theo, have you got any idea what the question is now? Have you have you got an answer or should we? You can go on? down the state <laughs> agent route. I remember route. the question. I the question. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, why did I get these from? Have you got an answer or do you, do we want to move on? What well, like what advice would I give myself as a seventeen year old? As a seventeen, I w- mine would be more mentally. Like I would say, everything is going to be okay. You can mm. you can do it. Life will get tough, but you'll become more resilient. You'll be able to be able to find out who you are as a person and just be comfortable in who you are like everybody's uniquely different and i think the best thing you can do is to be yourself no matter your age your sexuality your color of your skin like and i would obviously 17 year old me would not be sat here today like i was timid i was quite shy i was still outgoing but not to a point where i would ever think of being going on a national tv and mm. Coming, like, pretty much um, coming out gay again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then being on a massive podcast. Yeah, like and then this. being on a massive so, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think it's mind over matter. Yes. You can either do or don't. And fear is a choice. You can ch- let fear rule you or you can yeah. rule fear. And that's one thing that I take now. Even like my sister's quite shy when she does, stuff, does things and goes out. I'm like, but what about if you didn't do that? Mm, what's the alternative? What's the alternative? What would that be like? Yeah. Like, I still get nervous doing stuff, going, coming here, I get nervous, but I always think if I don't do that, mm. I'm missing out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, FOMO's a thing, but FOMO for me is different. It's like, I want to be able to be successful, so I want to put myself in situations that's going to help me become better, but also I don't want to miss out on an opportunity that could also help me grow and become a better person. Did that make sense? Massive. Did it? All right, Huge. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I ramble things. No, it just you, takes over. You're so right. And it's something I say all the time because people get fear about putting themselves out there, going on social media, you know, taking a risk, building a business, whatever it may be. But I think that's a great thing to always ask. Well, let's just think a bit logically about this. What's the alternative? And how does that feel? So the idea of not chasing your dreams and yeah. just staying the same and I think not well, achieving anything. I think as well, the industry that I want to be in, people are always like, oh, it's so far-fetched. Um, TV's just like, oh, yeah, it's a one-hit w- one hit wonder. And it's not. It's my dream. It's my passion. As well as cheerleading and being on TV, 
it's graft it's hard work like i've got a network i've got to make sure i've got in money's not good in tv at all you've got to graft you've got to be able to push yourself out there if somebody's saying you've got to do this challenge to i don't know get on this show you're gonna to have to do it sending self tapes it's a it's a job there's a lot day of rejection in, as well so and much so much rejection and it's from like Emmerdale when you're like, well, I'm just being on a TV show. I can't get on Emmerdale. It's massive rejection. And you've got to be resilient enough to be able to overcome that rejection. You can either, what I like to do is anything negative, I channel it and put it into positive outcomes. A no is an opportunity. One door closed is another open. Um, and you can always achieve something new. Um, and I literally have a motto, which I, I need to trademark actually. And it's achieve greatness and be the best you aspire to be. You can aspire to be as, as, like out of this world and ambition for me is is like i love that i love chasing ambition i love chasing a dream and some people look at me and think that's not realistic i'm like it is because i will be on that show i will be presenting i don't know i'm just manifest it right now let's say hmm, oh, which the chase. one bradley the chase. walsh is getting dated yeah sorry bradley walsh he's coming for you yeah but like you've expired yeah it's it's it is a dream but I will get there and people can stop me. People can be like, oh, it's, it's too ambitious. I'm like, do you know what, Susan, love? Watch so that's me. Julie. That's Julie, 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 Julie Susan, Susan, Susan and Bradley so. Walsh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, you've got against these British women. And <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just saying names. Just comes into right, mind. so we're calling everyone out. So talk, <laughs> talk about that idea of fear of rejection. Let's also talk about this idea of like haters, trolls, because... Fear of rejection and, and fear of judgment and what people think. Again, I think it's one of the biggest things that just keeps people playing at the level they're at. Like, they don't put themselves out there. Since the traitors in particular, have, have any of you had experiences with, like, trolls and hate and that kind of stuff? And if so, how how do you deal with that? I've been really lucky, right? So the only people that have actually had majorly taken the piss is the boys. Like my mates well, from these home. Two. <laughs> <laughs> these two haven't actually yeah, been that bad, but like right. the boys from Just home, yeah, yeah. like my God, have they given me grief about like some of the things that might have well, happened. What's, what's the main thing you got grief? The Tom about? and Alex one was pretty big. I thought it might be. Yeah. Yeah. They. Uh, what they said about you and Alyssa. They're, <laughs> Sorry. They really like her actually. Yeah? She's lovely. Oh, good. I'm glad you've been. Well, tell, don't tell them friends. I said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, no, they haven't met her. But um, yeah, I think. So like, not much online or anything like that? You've not had that experience? Online, it's not like... I think the majority of us have been pretty lucky, haven't we? We've all had reasonably good I was feedback. actually really, really lucky. So I, so at the time, they always used to tell us, don't go on Twitter, you'll see that. Mm. I, since the show's come out, and I'm probably going to jinx it right now, I think I had two bad tweets. And then I oh remember... No, there's been loads of memes of me crying, actually. Yeah, I've had loads of memes and people like... But I just laugh just, at them because yeah. I, think, I think... I know I'm ugly when I cry. <laughs> like, it's Everybody horrible. Is, though, they, We're all ugly <laughs> oh, no, I'm quite a good-looking crier. You <laughs> 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 yeah. went a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, I just... Yeah, I get really angry first. My eyebrows are right. What about you, Theo? Have you had anything? I've had a couple. Not that, not that much, actually. I think we've all done quite well. We've had it quite good, I think. Yeah. I mean, I did go on a podcast of a week and I said something quite controversial and that did have backlash. You know that you're going to have to say it again. What no, did you say? It again. No, it, 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 no, don't say it. Wait, no, we'll, fil we'll censor it. I, yeah. just, I don't have a filter. I just... <laughs> You know what? You ducked out of the shot <laughs> <laughs> and distorted the audio. <laughs> You've worked on this. Is he always st stepping in it? No, I'm just. I will say it. I just have a think filter. about it. I'm thinking about it. Use your brain. It's already out there. <laughs> and anyway. I'm gonna it's say it. out there anyway. It's like they're the angels. I'm the devil. Say it. <laughs> say it. <laughs> I just think I don't think before I speak. Like I'm very, very, very. What you see is what you get. Like that's my thing. I say it all the time. These yeah, boys yeah. like what you see is what you get. Um, Who did I just, say that? I just say what people. Who people have you of. offended? Basically, I went on Saving Grace podcast, and she has a thing where she pulls out tea. She read this tea out, and it was David Day was a cheat. And I basically turned around and said, after that dancer and nice performance, I would have been a cheat. Not being like yeah yeah like, okay and they've saying, used that clip and that's gone and, and got I got a lot of hate. What what was people saying? Like oh he's like um, putting women down and he's going for like women's something like performance skills and stuff like that. I was like I was just saying what everybody else was thinking. And that's the thing. This and is I'm how social media that. gets. This is this is I think a real 
like really important topic is how people see a short clip of something. And There's always polarizing viewpoints. People go to one extreme or the other instead of recognizing that every conversation has nuance. Like we, we've got different personalities. People have senses of humor. Yeah. Not everything is so serious. And no, so yeah. if I say this, I mean this. That is I, my sense of humor. I will always take the piss. Like I'm, I'm not gonna. Like, but I'm people gonna... know that about people. But some reason when they see it on social media, I just think there's a lot of sad motherfuckers out there. <laughs> That no, genuinely, that I just that I just like again, it comes back to what we're saying about people with money, like or wanting money. They're they're missing something within. There's either they, you know, they they're worried about how they look or they don't feel enough or good enough. So and, they'll bring you down. And That's they bring others doing. down. They'll want to bring you down. I so. could understand if I was fully like went in and like that but I didn't do that. I was just saying a joke. It was a joke. I wasn't like she does quite well on it actually. Um. <laughs> it, it would have been fine if you didn't do the eye roll. Yeah. The, the eyes but give it that's away. Me, that's my personality. It's, it's your sense taking, of humor. Yeah, it's my sense of humor. So, and I, and from what I know of you, Theo, you're one of the nicest, most genuine people. Thank and you. it's, it's so sad. And I think that people have got such short attention span now. Yeah. They just see something on ten seconds on TikTok, and it's like you bastard. It's all right. And I'll then get, they're, they're yeah, keyboard yeah. warriors. I'll get my camera back when I go and dance on ice next year. He is manifesting. Don't take yeah. that from me. That's my that was my dream. Well, was I strictly or were you? I'm dancing nice. Oh, strictly one of <laughs> No. That's definitely that's mm-mm. <laughs> What's Matt's like, what am I? No, nah, I think I didn't I'm even know what you were talking strictly about. Come dancing and dancing nice. I'd say Wait, dancing. which one am I? I'd take dancing nice. What did you say? I'm a celeb. I'm a celeb. I'm, I'm going in bugs. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm not a celeb, but still. Well, on that, We're we already celeb. know your your ma- what you've manifested. So I'll ask the other two lads. What's the main vision for the future now? Based on obviously everything you've done with the trade. Do what do you first? want next? You want a minute to think. Um, I don't know. Short, short, short to midterm at the moment. I'm just trying to have as much fun as possible, um, and I'm literally just trying to enjoy this experience for what it is. Midterm, I want to try to go traveling so bad to asia i want to get out there don't even say it this boy has tried to go traveling twice yeah twice and he's cancelled his flights yeah, twice it's so frustrating because right. i keep getting things and things coming through and deals oh, okay. and yeah, yeah. So like, i've got another project at the end of this uh month which is like um for an ad- animal rights uh group and i'm like working with them I'm, i was meant to be going literally next week so now i've had to push that back um but yeah that's probably like midterm and then long term it's not like i want to be a, like a tv personality but i love the i love the idea of experiencing like all like all of like dance on ice and stuff like that like it just looks so much fun like i was there last week um supporting patsy and matt and it, it, they just had so name much drop. fun <laughs> uh, name dropping they just, yeah, i was they with cheryl curl on wednesday they were just <laughs> having, like such a good time and i just thought this would just be an amazing experience yeah. just to do yeah, yeah. so but even going back to the traitors, I said to them, I was like, the only, the, the, the thing that I, I least liked about it is the fact that we're all going to get filmed. Well, the rest of it, I was like, yeah, I'm well up for it. But it just turned out really good. So I'm pretty glad now. <laughs> Did all right, didn't we? Yeah. But How yeah, that's you? my sort of thing. That's nice, what I'm looking yeah. for. How about you, Matt? I think like for me, Ride my bike. it's like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> just run <by. laughs> Um But yeah, like I don't really know. I'm just waiting and seeing what's happening. Living to be honest, moment, I same. don't really know what was like happening for the whole thing. I mean, I still don't really know what's happening now. Do you know what happened before? Like just about. <laughs> like I was a small child, then I grew up, and then Did now some stuff. we're here. here yeah, we exactly. And now I'm doing a podcast. Do you do know what I, I mean? really love that though. There's a there's a theme that you guys are bringing up, which is just about living for the moment. And yeah. I really it all really is love at the that. minute. You like could walk we outside and be hit by a bus or thrown under it. And like I don't think any <laughs> of us have actually <laughs> got traitors. like a proper plan. <laughs> yeah. Like I think like we're all just literally seeing this, what do you know happens. what i said the other day i was like if you don't have a plan for anything then nothing can go wrong that's the right attitude though i like that yeah yeah just wing everything i mean yeah. i like to plan <laughs> theo's, like theo's been I'm keeping us in check yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he's like, like he's like guys we're leaving at 10 we're past out 10 the today. house at 10 past nine well, I like, that. <laughs> like when i go to london i write myself an itinerary that's how planned i like to be like i need to be here there then that so then i'm just just more organized you need to get but up here yeah, I do need a PA, honestly. I absolutely I mean, wing every. What's a PA? I mean, I do wing it. I still do wing assistant. it. Personal assistant. Personal assistant, yeah. Oh, I wouldn't like one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say something. Like what do you mean? We've got, uh, well, I mean, Abby is literally like, she sorts everything out for yeah. us. That's basically. Is she a PA? No, she's no, not a PA, she's not but PA. She, she might, is, she, she, that's <laughs> the closest thing you could get to her. Basically. But do you know what I love about it? I love that you're just living in the moment, enjoying the present, but you're also open to opportunity and taking opportunities. 100%. Throwing yourself out there. 100%. And I think that's great. I think we all enjoyed being on telly, didn't we? We did enjoy it. Like, Oh yeah, I, I love, think like, I love we'd all feedback. do it again. Like, I'm not gonna lie. If, if, us, if I turned out like one of the it. people that probably didn't get a good feedback, I'd be like, I fucking hated that thing. I wish I'd never been. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. like but no, like obviously, I think. I, do you know what it is with? T- I, I, in the real world, I, I, I sometimes think 
good people get to a certain point, but bad people always get further because they always backstab them people. Yeah, in the world of TV, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the world of TV, I saw something the other day. It was like there's more um, psychos that are in the roles of CEOs than they're actually in jail. Yeah. Mad. Anyway, um, I've heard that too. And but <gasps> in in the world that is of TV, actual psychopaths. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, psychopaths yeah. because they will, they don't have like um they don't is that have like a clinical thing in your in your brain. So, so you they can go somewhere and they'll everyone. tell you you're a psycho. Yeah. Yeah, That's can, mad. Can do a test. Most of you are. It's probably. something. <laughs> hey, wait. It's something like Girl. I could be wrong on this, but it's something like every one in three hundred or a hundred people is technically a psychopath. Not necessarily one a killer. in three. Three hundred. Oh, I was oh, gonna say, which one of you two is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, Me. That, that's not. That's quite like regular. I, th- I yeah. don't know if that's the exact statistic. It's something like that. Ash, Google it for us. But <laughs> <laughs> I've just said something. To you. I'm sure it's something like one in every 300. So if you think about that, that's a lot of psychopaths loads. walking around every day. Stop. You've definitely passed one today. Yeah, probably. Or maybe probably sat with one. one. <laughs> 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 but anyway, why were we talking about that? Oh no! Oh yeah, that was it. So <laughs> and then see us, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. But like in the world of TV, if you're yes. generally a good person, a lot of people will see you. So then you 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 do go further. Yeah. Whereas usually the people that aren't as probably good won't go as far yeah. is but that good yeah. say can i say that I yeah know. but i, I think know. as well like if you're not genuine yeah, yeah. if you're not, you're not a gonna, genuine yeah. person then you're not going to get as far as the people that are genuinely good people yeah. Yeah. whereas yeah. like in the real world it feels like that's almost a bit flipped like they could just backstab you you know you're trying to get to that role above that other person that you're competing against you're always gonna but you don't want to be taken from mug as well and beating right my management i'm like i'm straight talking with them yeah, like yeah, yeah. if you're not gonna yeah. get me work i don't want to work with you yeah like, simple like you cannot Psycho. be taken for a mug. Like, I'm not scared to message the Waldorf and get uh, get a free stay, which I've done. Like, I will literally fire stuff out and be like, if I can do this, I want an equal amount of work. But I love that you're saying that about, like, your agents and your managers and things like that. It's because we know that in the industry, there's a lot of people that'll just do whatever they're told just yeah. because they're like, oh, yeah, you, you're, like, the gatekeeper to my dreams. But I think having the courage and the strength to say, look, this is my career, this is my life, I'm only going to do the things that are right for me. And if you can't help with that, or, then we're not right. Yeah. I know. think that's half the reason why I don't have one yet. Because yeah. I'm still sat there like trying to work out what is it that I actually want to do going forward. Because I don't want to have people pushing me to do the wrong things. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then like I know... I know going down like with the Instagram stuff and stuff like that, like I know that I don't want to be promoting stuff that I'm not 100% for. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And like I've had that with years, like going back years from me riding my bike and stuff. Like I've said no to loads of stuff because I'm like... I don't want to be promoting like your headphones when I wear AirPods. Yeah, you know what I mean? exactly. Yeah, like, it's it's not ethical. It's, it's not like it's like it's, it's wrong. Like I'm not yeah, gonna tell logic. you they're really good when I don't use them. Just yeah. for the sake you know of I mean? a brand collab. So it's like I think it. for me with like the whole agent thing is like I'm a rock and a hard place at the minute because I don't know which way I actually want to go with it. Mm. I mean, if like, I could plan a busy week like we've had and I could do that myself, which we've organised, like I've literally yeah, do you want to be jam packed week and I've done it all for like what we've not spent much money, have we? Like no, no, have we? Not spent much. I do need to go fill the van up though. So if you want to be my yeah, manager, I'm not doing that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if I can do that for us four, well, because we've had Alyssa with her as well, like traitor, traitor. Like, yeah. I want somebody to do that for me. So yeah, I'm just, it's just you just can't be taken from mugging TV because there are a lot of people, a lot of sharks, and I think we're quite straight talking all three of us anyway. We're just like I think that's another reason why we get along so well yeah, though us for it. And like I think the best thing about the whole show for me was like meeting you two, and then just having it as like. Oh. Our little yeah. thing here, isn't Matt's it? Matt's gonna it's get like emotional now. Have you got them good. tissues yet? Yeah. Yeah, or what? Like, <laughs> no, I'm not. It's like having again. two younger brothers. Let me tell you, I'm stressed. We're not that bad. Uh, questionable. You've got a few more nights, a few more nights together. See how you get on. Listen, it's been absolutely amazing. <laughs> We're gonna have to start wrapping up because we do want to do a little bonus interview for our oh, yeah, members yeah, in a minute. So. I just want to thank you all. This Thanks has for been having awesome. us. Thanks for having us. Like, that was amazing. Genuinely, absolutely loved it. But um, just before we finish, I just want to end on a final question that I always ask all my guests. And it's aligned with the theme of, you know, this is the Success School podcast. And it's about the idea of what is success. So if you could all give an answer, what is your definition? We'll start with Aaron. What is success to you? Um, I think success is definitely about just being happy, like within yourself and just trying to make your family proud. I think that's 100 percent. Yeah. Short answer. Theo and Matt are like, mm, I ain't got out. <laughs> Could have talked for a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you no. rambled on about estate agents for 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and then it just went can you, boom. Can, you, success. can <laughs> you cut all that success <laughs> when you're happy? <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's done. Uh, <laughs> Mic drop. I think success for me is um, you can never be too ambitious. I think dreams are, you can make a dream in a rea- reality. So I think that's, if, some, if you're dreaming to be 
a millionaire or a pilot, you can make that real. Mm. You just have to be willing to work hard and push yourself. Graft. Life is graft. Um, and take each day as it comes. Like sucks. Getting out of bed, greeting your family or texting your family, that's successful. Like um, I always say, I've, I've always lived by this, but successful people always make the bed in the morning. Oh, my line as well. Do you know what I mean? Damn I was thinking that. about that. I, I looked like, at you. Make your bed. <laughs> does he make it? No, Alyssa does. No, Alyssa hey, does. <laughs> to be fair, though, she actually has for the last couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> she could have done. She didn't say definitely. She might have done. It was and a then, possibility. Yeah, that's it. And achieve greatness. Be the best you aspire to be. That's, um, that's my motto. Nice. What was it? What do I think success is? Yeah. Right. What is it to you? Riding my bike. To me, right. The biggest thing about success is the little successes right mm. so like big ones they they you know they don't come every day mm. and like you'll know when one of them happens but then think about like the little ones so like i don't even know nearly landing a double backflip well that w we didn't succeed in that did we we, all, we almost we got close I need myself on the face so, so is that success or is that a failure well we'll have to go back and do it i think it was successful in our brain because we were your like best Whoa. effort it's success yeah right? it was good maybe but like just like the little wins of like stuff i don't know like Imagine getting in your car thinking that you have to fill it up, but you don't because you did it two days ago because you forgot. That's a success. So like a little win, isn't it? You don't yeah. have to go to a petrol station. I love that. Little I mean, it's like, like that will automatically put a smile on your face. And like, that's like the biggest thing for me. Or like just having someone else like holding the door open for you when you're not expecting it. Just say thanks. Because like, do you know what I mean? Like that's like a little success. But then also hold the door open for other people because it might make their day. What, like a you listen? So that's fine. <laughs> I'm not even talking about it right now. I was trying to make something really nice. What's you know what, Matt? That, that, that was really nice. Back. That was lovely. And I totally agree. It's about appreciating the little wins along the way. Matt, Theo, Aaron, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Having us yeah, it's been amazing. Thank you. Cheers, been tasty. Guys. And that is not the end of this interview with Theo, Matt and Aaron because they very kindly stayed around for a further 20 minutes answering some exclusive members only questions as some bonus material for our membership area only. Here's a little preview of what they said. What has been your biggest challenge in life and how did you overcome it? Oh, I know what mine is, like Jesus. just knowing that I've been through it and then kind of been able to come out the other side. I mean, now like if anything big like that happens again or like if I get nervous or if I get anxious, I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. Like, I know how to deal with it because I, I had to deal with it yeah. when I was so young. And it's, just, it's like an added pressure and pressure and pressure and pressure until it's like a pressure cooker ready to explode. Yeah. My cousin at a funeral quizzed it out of me. <laughs> uh, who does that at a funeral? <laughs> I was going to say. She knows who she is. Like I'm not going to name drop her. <laughs> I am going to name drop a saffron. So how do you deal with the overnight change from not having people know your face to being thrown massively into the public eye? I did a meet and greet the other day. Um, and for about an hour to an hour and a half straight, the guy that, that was hosting it was like, I don't know how you keep your energy up so much. Like, I'm mm. knackered. What was it about the format of the show that made you want to be on it? <laughs> I was like, that sounds lovely. I'll have a go. And then, yeah, before I knew it, it was like a couple You're of months down the line. Yeah, I fell in love. But you, all, you all had a happy ending, yeah. which Theo's pleased about. He likes a good happy ending. Yeah, uh, I was just literally about to say that. Say that. You beat me too. No, don't Sorry. pull that face like you've not been doing that. it for the past. Don't like, dropping innuendos left. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're just getting you back at your own game, yeah. man. Now, to listen to the rest of that interview, it doesn't cost you a penny to sign up today to become a member of Success School because we're offering a try before you can buy 14-day trial to come and join us. That will give you access to everything in the membership area, including many bonus exclusive interviews with all our guests, but it also gets you access onto our coaching calls that we do every month around mindset and well-being and high performance. It also gets you into our WhatsApp group where you've got daily accountability, encouragement, motivation and support. It's just an awesome place to be. If you're not already a Success School member, why on earth would you not be? Like, do you not want to live a more successful, healthy, happy, fulfilling life? If so, you need to be a member. If you want to stay a member full time, it is only £19 per month. I've made this as cheap as physically possible. And for that, you get access to everything, live coaching calls every month, so on and so forth. Click the link to continue watching the rest of this episode and to sign up to be a member. It will ask you for payment details, but no payment will be taken from you right now. That is just to make sure that you set up your account correctly and come and join us if you like it. I would love you to stay with us. And as I say, it's only £19 per month if you do want to be a full 
part-time member. But that is all for today. I really hope you found this useful. A massive thanks to Matt, to Aaron, to Theo. Absolutely awesome to speak with you all. Um, and if you have found this an enjoyable and entertaining and maybe valuable listen, please, please do me a favor. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, if you could subscribe wherever you're listening or indeed if you're watching on YouTube, that would mean the world. And if you could go on further and tell other people that they need to check out this episode, it would be massively appreciated. My mission with this podcast is to help people live happier, healthier, more successful and more fulfilling lives. But I cannot do this on my own as just one guy. There's only so much impact I can make. So it would be massively massively appreciated if you could help me to help other people start to help themselves. All you got to do is click that share button, stick it on your Insta story, drop it in somebody's WhatsApp, whatever it may be. And also make sure you tag us as well. If you tag us on the story, I am at Matt Hall official over on Instagram or at success school official tag us. I will share you um, out to our audience as well. And I hope we will see you on the next episode. But until then, thank you so much for your time. And I'm going to leave you now with the Jim Rowan quote that I always do, which is that traditional education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. I'll see you next time.